God somehow is pushing us all through different people in the same direction. And when we are done today, please, all those translating, translate well. When we are done today, if you ever get to heaven and you are empty handed, be rest assured. It's because you refuse to make a decision after you this. Being born again gives us the guarantee of heaven. But what you do with the born again needing, if there's any English like that, is what guarantees what gift you get when you get to heaven. Some of us believe coming to church is serving God. Come with me. Let me read. I know it's a seminar and I don't want to. But today we are going to do both seminars together with preaching. So turn with me to Revelation 5. If we can quickly. Revelation 5. And the 10, if I'm correct. I do like that. Right? Yeah. And has made us unto our God and unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on, on the earth. Turn also to Matthew 20. We're going to read three scriptures and then we'll proceed from there. Matthew 20. Twenty and verse sixteen. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many are many be God, but few choosing. Matthew, same Matthew six, verse nineteen to twenty one. Matthew six, verse nineteen to twenty one. Lay not up for lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust don't corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust don't corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Amen. We've read those scriptures, and I will repeat that statement again. Being born again is one thing entirely. What you do after being born again is another thing all together. The Bible says in Revelation 5 and 10, He hath made us kings and priests, priests and we shall reign with Him. You want to call it, you can title it called and chosen. Because you can be called but not chosen. And if you are chosen and not called, God does not work that way. Some of us have been called, but you have to take it a step higher to being chosen. Because many are called. Even prostitutes are called. Jews are called. As like as uh, what are the, the publicans and Christ, all of them have been called. But out of them all, how many did Jesus call, choose? Twelve. How many are called? If you think coming to church on Sunday and Friday or carrying the Bible makes you a Christian, then if this place is a garage, you can put you here probably by tomorrow you turn to BMW. It's as automatic as that. Coming to church does not make you a Christian. No. If you think coming to church makes you a Christian, we can as well put you, where did they put, the name of that, where did they put the airplane? Anger, God bless you. We can put you in anger, probably by tomorrow or next day, you will come, you will have turned from a human being to a boy in 747. Or we can fly you. What am I trying to say? Your Christian life has nothing to do with going to church. At all. What the, the, that scripture would say, we shall reign with him. That's where I, I, all these things is going to root out from. Or, if after today you can't make a decision, friends, you are on your own. Not for this church, for yourself and your God. You are on your own. If you are already doing it, it will push you. This is what pushes me personally over the years. Over the years, we will reign with him. Friends, some people will be beggars in heaven. My reward in heaven cannot be the same as uh, Rea Do you know that? Revelation waiting. Say, Behold, I come quickly. The last chapter and. Where is the The last chapter. The last chapter. I have it. 
I wouldn't like to waste time. Verse 12, 22 verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his word shall be. Simple. My reward in heaven cannot be the same with Reabonke. It cannot be the same with, uh, with Francis. It can't be the same with Benihi. It shall be according to your works. Friends, we are believing on the fact that we are called by grace. But what you do with the calling is another thing altogether. Your reward will be determined by what you did. Yes, we are saved by grace. But your works, by, of the grace that you receive, will determine whether you be a poor man. Man, heaven, there will be poor people in heaven. There will be people with voice cutter. There will be people with bungalow. They will be built with gold. How about, I'm not speaking rhetorically, literally. I'm speaking fast. That is how it will be. What you are doing now, in the name of God, in any church, if you don't want to serve here, go to another church. Just make sure that what is pushing you is the reward when you get before God. Whether you will hear him say, get out of faithful servant, or worthy servant, or we say, welcome to your rest, and give you a due reward according to your works. So those of us that are serving already in different ministries, and those of us that are sitting now in line following church, thinking carrying the Bible to church makes us Christians, and will get us to heaven. Fine, it will get, to, get you to heaven. But you'll be poor there and broke. That scripture over there says, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. The very day you gave your life to Christ, an account was opened in your name. And if you don't send in an account in Prima Bank, you cannot go there and withdraw. You can't. Unless there's something in that account, you can't withdraw nothing. And if you are right, as young as we are, we understand Mama Flora and Pastor Jerry that are married. The Bible says those that are married care for the things. Oh no, those that are married care for how to please their husbands and wives. But those that are married care for the things of. We don't know that scripture. Of but God. Of God. If as young as we are, we can still make a decision to serve God with all our youth. To serve such that. When you get married, it's already a part of you. You can't do without serving. If you don't do it now, friends, when you're like this with three legs, you can't. You can't. If you can't serve God now, you cannot serve God when you're 50 years old. It's not magic. It can't happen. So, so those of us that are thinking, it's just to come to church, cross leg, pastor, Jerry minister to you, lay hands on you, amen, it is well. And you go home. No problem, friends. No problem. But the day it dawned on me that I'll be broke in heaven. I asked God, what can I do? I don't want to be broke. When I was still a bad boy, I always had the impression, God, even if my sin will not, like, just let me enter heaven. If it's to be cleaning people's door, no problem. Just I did I was trying to avoid hell. So I don't go to hell. Let me just enter the heaven. But friends, but friends, the day my eye opened that I can actually own a mansion in that street of gold and do and what I need to do to end that mansion, my eyes open. You will serve God differently. Whether pastor pays you or not, whether pastor comes and says, Pasiba, uh, manager, who cares about this Pasiba and manager? Who cares? Some people say, Pastor did not come in, so I didn't come to church. Let me continue the seminar. Let me finish. I'm not going to tell us today uh, 17 things in leadership, uh, 17 things to become a good leader. Nah, nah, nah. I'm going to provoke us, those of us that are already serving. Those papers that we have going on, if you don't have it, please tell the ushers. The French one refused to open on the computer, I don't know why. They just translated it. When we open it tomorrow, we'll bring it. Answer it. When we reorganize ourselves, I want us to go with this revelation that we're going to catch today and serve with more vigor from Korea with English. With more passion, not to be seen, not to be held by the leader of the group, or to be held by a pastor, or for anybody to pay pay you. But because you are, you know where your that account is being set for. That, that will push us better. There is the joke uh, about a driver and a pastor. I I, I just remember the driver got to heaven, the pastor got to heaven. I think this one will help us. Eh? The pastor told, uh, was given a mansion. And then God gave the driver of the church bus. He didn't preach, oh. he didn't back 
of song go ewa. He didn't be quiet. He was just driving church bus. Permit my English church. And I'm getting to heaven. They gave him a bungalow. Gave him this. My pastor stands. I did not call for people. I preached for all my life. And God answered me. Guy, those of us that preach it. He said, when you were preaching, what were people doing in church? God bless you. We are preaching. One of us are preaching. And people are sleeping. Even pastor that is our pastor, doesn't even understand what we are preaching. One of us from those that are members. But the bus driver, what was he doing? I know this I drive rough. Maybe after this, you will like me. He said, God said, anytime that I go for crusade, if this guy is driving, people are speaking in tongues. God, let us reach our destination. People are praying. But he's driving. The guy is not preaching on just driving people to say, people they learn from God to say, think it down. Just so that they reach their destination. And you say God should not profit. God said, more people were reverence God under the anointing of his driving, more than under the anointing of pastors. Do you now realize that what you do doesn't matter whether it's in the front or the back? All the same, God. When you catch that revelation, don't care whether your leader sees you, whether your leader say thank you. Though it's good to say thank you, I love it. You will serve God differently, friends. When we reorganize ourselves, it won't be hard for you to come to church. It won't be hard for you to hold meetings and come out with the, uh, pro, uh, good uh, and be productive in every area. We're not going to distribute ourselves into 50. I know churches that have 20 ministries. No, no. We will blend them into one for easy access and for, for convenience of everybody. Blend them into few. And you see where you belong and be functional there. Let's continue. I'm going to be using David and Saul that Pastor Brother Luke has been speaking about. I will say this straight away and I hope you catch it. May God not reject you. Amen. You can be called, but not chosen. That we are proving by Matthew 20, 16. Many are called. You start with plenty now. Only God. The Bible says no, God knows those that are his own. His own. You can be called, but not chosen. In the old times, kings were chosen for certain purposes. And they were removed if they failed. God. My, mom, my guy was preaching the other day about Elijah. I've said it here many times. God don't negotiate. He said, one guy, go die. My guy, my guy, before you die, let me anoint Elijah. God did not say, guy, you, you raise the dead. He raised the dead. You call fire. Eh? You raise the dead. You, 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 you did this. God does not negotiate. You either perform or God remove you. May God not remove you. And let me say this. You cannot be successful in God's business and be a failure outside. In business, in, at work, in your profession. Why should I read that scripture in Revelation? Uh, what was that again? Revelation what? 22.12. No, no, no. Not 22.12. 5.10. He says he had made, made us kings and priests. Priest is the modern name for priest is what? Pastors. That's spiritual. You are a spiritual pastor. But he has also at the same time made those kings. Kings in social sphere. So God is telling you both spiritually and physically you are supposed to reign. You are supposed to reign. Spirit, you can't... I, I told someone, I said, I can't, I, can't, I can't labor for God in church. In God's name. And then you tell me who bless me in business. No possible. I can't... They beside have been all... I have been waiting since I was born. Now I am old. I have never seen the right church for sin or a seed begging for bread. It's not possible, friend. You want to succeed in your personal businesses, ladies. Just make sure you are successful in God's business. Bible says, when you take care, uh, how, does, how, does, how does the scripture put it now? He said he cared for his own. I don't know the song or the scripture. He said he knows how to take care of his own. It's not possible, friend, for you to be successful as a priest and not be successful as a king. It's not possible. 
The two go hand in hand. And let me tell you, friends, if you are a failure in God's business, it's a question of time. If you are passing now in the business world, it's a question of time you will pack up. I can show you by the scriptures. You will pack up. The rest are short. The day saw that we're going to look at trying, it that was the end. God said, I reject. In fact, God said, I repented that I made him king. I repent that I called you to be a Christian. I repent that I make you a member of ICC Odessa. May God not say that about us. I repent that I put you in Odessa. What was your usefulness? We preached here many times, good for this good though, beautiful Casimir. But that you go, nothing. You're beautiful. You just a son. He just tall, he just gets strength. Carry on Arisha in no feet. For God, though, not be carrying chair for just for God. Help us move this chair. Ain't no feet. But you get strength. So, in the land of Israel, that's right. So, in the land of Israel, was the tallest in the land. The most handsome. The Bible says, above, can you imagine? Millions of people, and you are the most handsome. <laughs> I'm beginning to show us criteria that we may possess. We might be the best in the drama group or whatever way we are, or the most powerful in our group. But when the real duty came calling, let's proceed. Who is a king? King was a man of war and he defended the land. Two, a king was a man of justice. He judged the people in righteousness. A king was a leader. He led the people, if he led the people astray, he was removed. God wastes no time. I wrote it here. God does not waste time in removing you. And the blood of everybody that went and stayed under your watch, God will require it at your end. God looks for all these qualities in the material for leadership. I don't want to read because of time. Okay, we have to read this. First Samuel, you may not turn here, please, but just write it down if you want to. Write it down. 1 Samuel 16. We can read the whole chapter, but I'll pick out the ones we we'll use. Verse 1. Have you read? Ah. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul? Still I have rejected him from reigning over Israel. Fill thine horn, oil, horn with oil and go. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me. A king among his son. God provided himself, not even for the nation of Israel. Not even for church. God said, the calling I have given you in Odessa is not even for ICC. It is for, can I hear you? It is for myself. So if you think you are serving pastor, you are serving ICC Odessa, you are better you think. Verse 6 to 7. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. For where? But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God had rejected Eliab and others. He didn't possess what God was looking for. I will read verse 11 and 13 before I proceed. 11 to 13. And Samuel said unto Jesse, And I hear all thy children. And he said, There remained yet the youngest, and behold, he kept the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes to And he went and besought him in and brought him in. Now he was rudy. Look at the characteristics. You will know that God, all those things that we think makes a mighty leader. God does not look, God is just looking for a man after his own heart. A person that is just ready to say, Lord, here am I. What do you want me to do today? Break down this wall. Here we go. Prepare this light. Here we go. Those simple, simple things. God is so simple that the Bible says the, uh, he has used the uh, foolish things to confound the fool of the wise. God does not look out for big, big. We might say we need uh, ten thousand dollars for camp. Maybe it's just one campaign you have, and you give it in the name of God, and God knows that's your best. God does not need big, big things. He just needs people that will be committed and say, "Lord, it's because of you and me." That's all. It's not hard. The Bible says the Spirit of God came on David from that day forward. 
What do we see here? A man that was anointed was rejected. To start with, who was Saul? Saul, by virtue of that scripture, if you get, up back, if you get to read a little backward from the book of 1 